So, welcome everyone to Late Night Restaurant Show. Do I sound stressed? Do you? <laughs> you never sound stressed. <laughs> welcome everyone to Late Night Restaurant Show. Live at the Chicago Show. Mm -hmm. Charlie, it is so great to see you here. Thank you again for for jumping in. I, I was blown away when I saw you. Jay, I always got time for you. You always got time for you? I always got time for you. You see, we got to, you know, enjoy the moment, hey? 100%. Two Alberta boys. You know? Hanging uh, in, in Chicago at the National Restaurant Association show, podcasting at the entrance and Starbucks is behind me. Right? That's um, what dreams are made of. I know, like, like it's <laughs> going to get better, really. Doesn't? Totally. You know, it's always nice to run into Canadian content when you're down here in the States in such a, you know, in Canada, we're a big fish in a small pond and you come here and, oh. you know, you're a minnow in a lake. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, when you see when you see people, you know, it's, there's, <laughs> there, there's something great about it. Absolutely. So Food Service Solutions, you guys are here, got a booth. Absolutely. What are you guys doing? So, you know, for those that don't know us, we're a commercial equipment distributor. Yep. We're a team of chefs. Uh, and our goal, make smarter kitchens. And we've had a tremendous amount of success on the Canadian side. And some of our manufacturers said, listen, with what you're doing in Canada, we'd love to have you rep us in the U.S. That's and huge. it's our uh, second year, second time at NRA. And uh, the market's growing, our team's growing, and uh, it's good times. That's awesome. Awesome. So you had, had, had you even had a chance to walk around? You know what? A little. Okay. I mean, listen, with the with the cost and the amount of work that's yeah. involved in running a... You guys have no small booth. No. Uh, you it's know, huge. It's for four brands of what we're showcasing. It's it's a big deal. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of team members. There's a lot of moving parts. We have a like a, a full kitchen setup. We're doing four live cooking stations. Each, co each edge was a live station. Totally. So we have four brands here that we're uh, distributing in the U.S. So each station is live cooking. As a team of chefs, we don't want to just showcase wow. equipment. We want to show people how to be successful with it. So uh, everything's live at the back. We've got a dish pit. Uh, we have, you know, staff back there keeping us going. It's uh, it's it's a, it's a real deal operation here. Isn't that awesome? We love it. We like, It's what we do. You know, it's part of who we are as a company. Uh, we don't hire salespeople. We hire chefs. Yeah. And I love that. We showcase what we do, and we do it live. Well, I think that's what I noticed even going up to your booth on – Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what day it is. I know, right? You know, it's like it's all a blur. So, but Saturday came up, and it, you could feel that presence. It wasn't not dissing the other twenty, sure, twenty sure. two thousand nine hundred one hundred ninety nine other or ninety eight other. It's foods. amazing that you know that. I know that. Well, I had to do commercials. <laughs> <laughs> so I do know how many people are here, but um, it's a different feeling when you have chefs showcase some products and really is 100 percent. you know uh our president chris kohler had a really and he was cool oh yeah he's a cool dude 100 percent. like totally not a plug not a plug yeah <laughs> not a plug not a brownie but you know what it's it's been the company's go-to-market strategy since day one yeah. you know it's about chefs it's about we've walked the walk we we understand we can relate to the experience of chefs and operators uh we have test kitchens across uh north america now so it's all about really showing people not just what our equipment can do, but how to be successful with it. And what better than having chefs show them how it's done. So let's humanize a little bit of your brand with you. Sure. How long have you been in the industry, Charlie? I've been in the industry. I'm 47 and I started at 19. So if I have to quickly oh, do the I math, got, I, got a couple, years. I got a couple more on you. Yeah. Uh, uh, you don't, you don't look at, at no, all. No, no, not years, <laughs> but years in the industry. Fair enough. Right. Well, again, that can weather you more than age. <laughs> so you never know. It's but true. Uh, yeah, no, it's been it's it's been an interesting career. It's never been kind of one directional. It's been a lot of different things. Uh, but I've now been with Food Service Solutions for five years. And nice. You know what's funny is you know a lot of us who have excelled yeah. in the industry, especially front of house, you know, always get offered sales opportunities and different things. And I thought I'd really be a lifer. And when the opportunity presented itself with food service solutions and the fact that I still get to engage the industry, but be on the sales side, maybe have a little bit more work-life balance. Yeah. It was an easy decision at the time to make. And in all fairness, for the last five years, I've been telling myself, why didn't I do it sooner? Really? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about your cooking. Sure. Because you're, you're a chef. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not... Uh, an, like, you know, I know. No, don't even say you do because you're not a chef because you don't have papers. But here's the thing. I know, but that's not true. I think you are. Listen... I, Absolutely, chefs can develop in the industry. Not yes. everybody has to get a no, formal education. No, no, I know some of the be. greatest chefs 
that don't have that. Uh, the reason I do it, and I'll be honest with you, my colleagues are all veteran chefs. They're, and in some cases, decorated chefs. Yeah. Some yeah. of our colleagues have been Culinary Team Canada for years. Yep. Um, and I understand the work and all the things that come with being a chef in the industry. And I haven't done that for the majority of my career. I bounced from kitchen to front. I spent the bulk in the middle of my career in front of house as a Did you go director. in front of house? I started in the kitchen. I ended up going front of house. I think we lived a parallel life. Yep. You know, Seriously. We, we kind of, you know, there's so much about us that <laughs> makes us feel that we're maybe brothers from another mother. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know what? I spent a bulk of it wearing a suit, f and director, yeah, Gia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I found myself at kind of the tail end of my career, at least this stage of it, coming kind of rotating back into the kitchen. But I loved it for just for some reason. It just seemed a natural progression to go front of house. So when I say I'm not like your quintessential chef, it's about the fact that I respect those who have spent the 20 plus years yeah. doing that and what it takes. And that wasn't my experience. So I don't want to give myself a title and put myself on that same parallel stage where they really took the time to earn it. Well, I think also is that, the, like, I, I think the chefs respect that. Like, I think sure. chefs do, right? I think it's an earned title. Yes. And if you don't put in your dues, I don't feel like it's something that you can just give yourself. You just you can't just put it on a business card. Adorable. Look at that. Do you see who that is? Carla Hall. Yeah. Food effort? I might win. Really? <laughs> Mazels. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Mazel tov, my friend. That's amazing. You're the shit. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> We're not cutting that out. Okay. That's what we do in late night because the late night show, I don't know if you know that we, we even have pee breaks once in a while. I, you know, we're, we're getting older. You we are sometimes. only human. You are only human. <laughs> we, did a, we had a pee break the other day because Dominic was talking. And I'm like, I gotta go to the bathroom, dude. You know what? These things happen. Yeah, and and he know, just kept talking. And then all of a sudden I come back and he's talking. I'm like, did you even know I left? <laughs> the, the magic of podcasting. Exactly. <laughs> Good for you. So F and B, yeah, front of the house. Sure. What draws you into this this industry? What is the draw? Like, like that's the key. Is don't tell me that you like the involved. Because yeah, I know sure. that. that's sure. your DNA. Liking it gets you into it. Yes. Liking it doesn't keep you in it. Nobody okay. rides the road for 20 years doing something no. if it's just because I got into it because I liked it. What it, is it? What is it? I think it's part of it's part of the DNA. But, you know, but, like but like you could do anything. I You're jail. Yeah. Man. yeah. I, I have a degree in economics. I have I, a degree I, in art. You know, if it was up to my mother, I'd be an accountant right now. <laughs> you know? But I, I, I gravitated it. to it. You know, my father was a hotel guy. He was a GM. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So like okay. He, he was an industry guy. By the time I grew up, he was kind of out of that game. Uh, but you know, I just I don't know if it's a cultural thing or a DNA thing, but it was as a kid, you can kind of notice I had a little bit of the gift of the gab and maybe some of that skill set was lost being in the kitchen. I don't know if that helped me gravitate to front of house and spend a long career in it, um, but it felt right. You know, I'm really happy I got a formal education. I think it really provides a perspective into the industry that people who don't get that education. Well, I have the have. same thing. So I have a degree in, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, right? There you go. Same thing. I went to university. Kind of, I earned my degree there too. I think it's the work ethic. I think a little bit of the way that we look at things and how we solve problems. 100%. It comes from that experience at university, right? Right. There's a lot, of, and also the ability to multitask, deal with stress. It, there's a connection, I think, Great within points. our industry. You know, I I felt like whether it was my DNA or my life experience, it felt like the place I needed to be. I have no problem, like with the education, everything leading up to it. I think it help give me more tools to navigate and be successful in the industry. Uh, but it always felt right. And then when it did, I made that change. Yeah. But it took over 20 years to get to that point where I felt like it was time to do so. And, you know, marriage and, you know, your personal life yeah. also obviously plays yeah. a role in your professional now, are decisions. are you living in Drum Helen? I'm not living there. Like, self. I'm actually, I'm, I'm south of Drum. It's on, it's like an acreage. It's gorgeous. I'm about an hour outside of Calgary. But in all fairness, I still bounce back and okay, forth. Okay. We have a place in Edmonton. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, you know, I, I manage wow. the province of Alberta for our company. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, windshield time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I bounce back and forth. It all depends on where I need to be and when I need to be there. 
So I have, you know, I'm really fortunate, thanks to my wife's side and my family, that we have property down in southern Alberta. Oh, it's so I'm, beautiful. You know, your, not pictures, always in a hotel. your pictures when you post stuff thanks, man. are awesome. Dude. We, you know what? Talking about the change coming out of the industry and being on, like, on the sales side now, we talked about work-life balance. And I think that plays a huge role in it because, you know, the industry can be stressful. Living in the city has a different vibe to it. Yeah. You know, I just got to the point in my life where I like being in the city to do what I need to do for work, restaurants, you know, all the things that come with an urban lifestyle. But, you know, when, when I'm down there and I can break away from the city and get out to the country, it, it, it's, it's such a calming thing. You know, it's quiet. It's peaceful. We're in farm country, I about 20 minutes south of Drum. It reminds um, me of home. Yeah. Like, my I home. mean, for me, I mean, I grew up in Toronto. But for my wife, she spent See, a lot of time up there as a kid. So you Southwest get it. You Saskatchewan, get it. You like get you're, it. you're close to my home. Fair, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm <laughs> an hour and a half from the border of Saskatchewan, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it really plays a role in work-life balance. And, yeah. you know, um, at, at this stage in my life, you know, a little bit of peace and quiet does it does the body a lot of good. You know, I think when you talk to companies and we find people like yourself in the companies that share the little bit about your life in, in, in the perspective of humanizing brands. And you see that today, and I have seen the opposite here as well, is how brands don't really have a human connection. Sure. And I, and I think what you're doing, Charlie, and, and your posts and what you guys do, and your, and your president and everyone else that really fosters that humanized brand. I felt it when I went there. Um, I feel it when I talk to you. And that is, I think, a big part of your guys' success. I appreciate that. I really that. do. I really do. And I feel I'm not I'm being sincere. Yeah. There's no plugs here. No smoke. There's no smoke. <laughs> right? But I just really see that. And I always want to call companies out that do that. Sure. Because we don't have we need to do more of it. Because through the seventies and eighties and nineties and early two thousands, we felt that we had to be someone different. And you guys don't do that. Well, it's nice of you to say and nice of you to recognize. Um, you know, I, I appreciate it coming from you because I know how engaged you are with the industry and how many businesses you come across and, and you know, <laughs> speak to. Yeah. So, no, that's really nice to hear. Yeah. But, you know, again, you know, going back to the to Chris and the philosophy of our company, that's, you know, he wanted that relatability and that human connection to our customer base yeah. because we've been there. We've done it. We, we understand your pain points. We understand your challenges. And it creates that human connection. When we do demonstrations and stuff in our equipment, you know, we have a real philosophy. We want to obviously convey features and benefits and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, the, the, you know, wonderful things these things can do for your business. But at the end of the day, when it's coming from someone who's walked the walk and talked the talk, it, it, it translates differently. It's absorbed differently. And as I said before, we want people not to just buy our stuff. We want them to be successful with it. That's how we've been able to create business retention word of mouth and and it, it's a huge benefit to the business but and it that human connection helps us enjoy the job more because we get to deal with a lot of different chefs a lot of different operators in all levels of food service yeah. so whether we're engaging a qsr or we're engaging a hotel or fine dining yeah. restaurant you know there's something in our lineup that suits their needs but from all of us with our team wow. we have such diversity in our experience that and we meet as a team every single week i mean not in person we're spread out across north america but virtually we we talk every week we share stories we share experiences and it helps us develop as people and develop as chefs and salespeople. so it's a an amazing recipe that that's working really well for the company so canadians show up more canadians <laughs> That's how Canadians show oh, up. Canadian show up. <laughs> Sorry, there's people all rocking around. Like, Who's here? Who's here? <laughs> yeah, we say Canadians and people jump out. Uh, do you know so and so? That's what they always say. Totally. I mean, I mean, you know, and you listen, do. We, that's a scary we're thing. We're the population, but we're like, you know, I we're, say, we're big space. I always say is that we sometimes show up late to the party, but we show up the loudest. <laughs> that's a nice way. To, that's, a, that's a nice way to put it. But you know, it's yeah. I mean, being down here, and again, just the volume of oh, boots, the volume oh. of people, and you know, you're always constantly engaging. When you have that little moment where you see someone you recognize or somebody it's you throw your back, it's it's yeah. it's, it's a lo yeah. it's lovely moments amidst like a lot of work and a lot of other engagement at the show for sure. Well, Charlie, it's great seeing you here. Thanks again for the, the late night restaurant show live in Chicago. How nuts is that? I, I get used to saying it. You know what I. I have been speaking with you and working with you and crossing paths with you for years and seeing the development and what you're doing. 
uh, you know, it was not that long ago we were crossing paths at the Restaurants Canada yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and seeing you now here at NRA. Maybe next year we'll cross paths at NAFA. Well, we're coming back. Well, well that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you know, as, as I see your brand and all the different things you're doing growing, I'm always pleased to be invited <laughs> to join in on it. And um, it's great to see a colleague, you know, really grow a part of this market for our industry and creating a voice that I think it's a space that needed filling yeah. and it's so nice to see you doing that. I love it, man. Appreciate awesome. you. Enjoy your time here. Thank you. There you Thanks go. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Done.